One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, hello, hello. This is the deer man. Where is Norma Jo, you may ask? Norma Jo was in the shower getting drunk and it was taking too long to put her makeup on. So I'm here, the deer man, to take up the uh, mantle for now. Don't worry, Norma Jo will be back. Um, anyways, I want to fucking run through the rest of this fucking story because I'm really sick of it. And I have a plan, okay? For the rest of my story, I realize that a lot of these, um, like, college and post-college stories are all the fucking same. Because even though my middle school stories were more badly written, obviously because they were written by a young child, I kind of like them better because... At least I was, you know, I was trying to write my own Twilight Zone, my own night gallery, and I was, it was more based on the story and the twist of the story, whereas once I got into college and all that stuff, it was more about, like, character study and people's emotions and always exploring the same emotions over and over and over again. So how much of that can you really fucking take, you know? So pretty soon I'm going to do a fucking speed run. Of some stories, just burn through some of them, because they're all the fucking same, you know. <clears throat> but for now, alright, oh my god, I'm already a minute and a half in. Time goes so quickly. Alright, let me start reading. Mindred showed shoved open the heavy swinging doors. She could tell that the two of them, two of the animals had been talking, but they went silent as soon as she walked in. The animals stared at her, giving her the once over. One of them, a dark-skinned girl, probably Puerto Rican or Spanish. How does she know she's, she's like, oh, she's probably Puerto Rican. Like, she doesn't say, like, she's Hispanic. She's like, no, you're specifically Puerto Rican. How does she know that shit? I don't know. Um, she fixed Mindred with the cold. Stop that. That cat's trying to push the button on here. Uh, blah, 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 blah. She fixed Mindred with a cold stare and growled at her. The whole block was barking at her, swearing at her. Bitch, who are you? Someone's sister? Oh, I'm so scared now. How far can you see without your glasses? Oh, not far, I bet. I wonder if she can see with them on. Come on, whose sister are you? They, they got a lot of attitude for these people. I could kill them any moment. Um, she pretended not to hear, tried to block them out. Which one was she assigned to? 432, right? The one on the solitary test or something like that. They told her to bring him over and they'd tell her the rest then. She hoped and prayed that this wasn't all a joke to play on a newbie. She actually says newbie. <laughs> I think it means newbie. It was definitely not funny. Yeah, you know hazing always goes on in these places. Um, he was near the door. A small wiry boy who looked about 19. He reminded her of a stoat. That's random. Uh, rusty haired and glaring eyes, licking his lips to show his teeth. His eyes, they were so sharp next to the red brown of his hair. She had had a pair of blue rats once, and their fur was the exact color of those eyes. Oh yeah, remember blue rats? Blue rats are cool. I wonder if they're still around. She unlocked his cage with a few quick flicks of her hands. The words of the block animals were harsh, and she tried harder to block them out. In a few moments, she didn't know what to do. In her old job, there was always someone on the sidelines. Someone to put a frantic animal down. Ooh, but she reminded herself this wasn't her old job anymore. Now, she, yeah, she's living in a fucking ramshackle fucking ghetto-ass place. Besides, she, he was small for his size, and she was big. She could take him. <clears throat> Mindry gripped him by the back of his neck. You know, that doesn't really work with humans. Yeah, you can do it with cats, because they have some, like, loose skin back there, and dogs, they kind of have some loose skin. Humans don't really have loose skin on the back of their neck, you know? That's why you gotta grab them by the shirt. So I guess whatever. So he couldn't move. <laughs> yeah, okay. She tried to hold him up under his arms the way you would with a dog. So she got one hand on the back of his neck and one one arm under his armpit. <clears throat> okay. Uh, the way you would with a dog. But he dug his side teeth deep into her wrist. She was determined not to squeal, not to give in to him. <coughs> he clawed at her face screwing up her glasses. They were hanging at a weird angle from one ear across her nose. Yeah, this place doesn't take care of their workers, man. Don't work for a place like this. They don't give a fuck about their workers. No benefits or anything. Uh, he dug his fangs into her again, and this time she gripped him in her sharp nails and bit him hard in his ear, drawing blood. Ah, <laughs> that's funny as fuck. In a minute, she had him just where she wanted him. Both his hands were behind him, and she shoved him ahead of her so he couldn't strike at her. He looked like a criminal being led to death row, despite the fact she has no 
uh, stun gun. She has no fucking anything. She doesn't even have a nightstick. They really put their employees out. Uh, asshole, she spat. Why didn't you tell me there wasn't any sedatives? <laughs> well, couldn't she tell that from the start when she wasn't armed? Mr. Shiloh wasn't around. She wouldn't be swearing like that if he was. Oh, what's the matter? Afraid of his teeth? Come on, what do you think this is? The SPCA? <laughs> Come on, girl, get physical. Oh, God. This is like just a fucking Nazi, a ghetto Nazi camp. He and his friends laughed like faucets. What the fuck? Mindra just stood there. She didn't talk to them again. She did her job, recording the rate of his heartbeat or something. Yeah, or something. Uh, she didn't know why this was important. She didn't really care. <laughs> Who's that new chick, said California. I'll bet Livel could tell you all about her. They are doing sex jokes again? Damn, four-eyed chick. Damn, they're hating on people with glasses. You know, it's funny because in the 90s, it was kind of like an expected thing to like make fun of people with glasses. Like, it was still asshole-ish, obviously, but it was like something you expect. But now, nobody makes fun of people with glasses anymore. Even fucking, uh... <coughs> even fucking... What, what's that name of that... That fucking hella slutty-ass cartoon character? Um, Bayonetta. Even she had glasses. So, glasses is really not an issue anymore. Uh, did you see the way she used her teeth? Oh, fuck her. They paused. Both of them were blondes with brown eyes and pale skin, but they looked very different. California's hair was a sandy blonde, and Skippy's was a shiny golden. California's eyes were a flat, dirt brown, and Skippy's were a shade darker with flecks of orange in them. Oh, orange chocolate. I love that. Skippy was shorter, but with round, curving hind quarters. You mean ass and breasts. Ass and hips. Um, California was tall and thin with hardly any breasts. <laughs> like me. Well, I'm not tall and thin. I'm not, I'm not tall. Her face was plain, while Skippy's had a shadow of freckles on her nose or over her eyes. Digger laid on his side, licking his burns painfully. Damn, bitch, they didn't even bandage that shit up. Eventually, he got sick of it and went to sleep. <laughs> I wish that worked in real life. Like, oh yeah, like, I'm just bored of being in pain. I'm just gonna go to sleep now. Let me turn off this water right here. Well, maybe I'll just put my... Oh, this is gonna be a cooking show, too. Half cooking, half reading, okay? Making some food, making some food. Okay. Where was I? Talking about ass and titties and shit. Um, and burns. Or at least he pretended to. Yeah, man, if I had burns on me, I don't think I'd be able to sleep. That shit will keep you up, man. Pain will keep you up. Simon had ties on his arms. Someone had done a sloppy job and he had easily ripped them off and he was chewing on them. Val was dreaming. California looked at her. She was grinning and twitching in a happy dream. Hey, okay, well, I don't know what she's dreaming about. Probably of tearing puny DOAs limb from limb, of course, because she's so violent, you know. Skippy sat back on the wall of her cage. It was hot for winter that day. It never snowed where they were, but normally it was rainy and cold. She put her hand to her mouth like she was smoking a cigarette. <laughs> That's funny, pretending like she's smoking. Mmm, so baby, what you in for? So these people supposedly forgot about their previous lives, but... They, they are, this one's imitating fucking a, a prison movie or something like that. Uh, what you in for? What'd you do? Eat someone's eyes? Collecting teeth without a license? Wanna know what I did, baby? I did something horrible. So you wanna know? You ready? I want, ew, you really wanna know? Digger, her RPG partner, oh my god, no comment on that, was still pretending to be asleep. She had to answer herself. Uh, I know where- I've been there, man. Having a fucking roleplay with yourself.
Skippy cleared her throat, putting on a deep voice that sounded like a horse. A little horse. Is that a, like a joke? California almost laughed out loud. Oh, the suspense is killing me. Tell me now. Tell me please. But no one ever got a chance to find out what she had done because the game suddenly got frantic. Of course, she's having a fucking fit. She leapt up, terrified, and grabbed at the wire of her cage. She shook it as hard as she could, crying out, Please, don't let him do this to me. Don't let him take me away. Her voice got that quality of echo so that her cries sounded like screeches. Help me, can anyone help me? You, you, any of you? Help me, don't you care? No, don't take me away, I'll kill you. I'll kill you all. I'll eat your heart out. Who says that? Rip you to pieces. I tell you all, I won't ever go back. I can't go back. Minji waited until the block went silent before coming in with Libel. It was much easier than before. He seemed exhausted, and she had to support him half the time so he wouldn't collapse. As wet and salty as he was. Yeah, so there- so this is obviously ripped off from the plague dogs, putting him in some kind of fucking water chamber or something. Also, I heard about some fucking Nazi experiment where they will put people in a dark chamber of water. Like, uh... That was- it only came up to like their knees or something, but they would be in there for like days and days and shit. No food, no water, no, nothing like that. So maybe that's kind of what it's based on. I don't know. Ask a 12 year old. Um... The golden haired blonde, 208 was her number, was sitting curled up in the back of her cage. Her hands were up over the back of her head, the way you did in earthquake drill. This time the taunts of the animals were different, before they were for amusement, like a school bully. But this time... There was much more growling than swearing, and they were accusing her of something. You did this to her bitch, happy now? They were accusing her of hurting the blonde. For some reason, though, they don't give a fuck about level, I guess. The way they said it made her skin prickle. She shut in 432 and left as quickly as she could, the sharp words tearing away at her mind. Yeah, okay. She could never be a cashier then. She was in the hallway with Hawk, her with coffee, and him with tea. That's funny. And I told him, come on, what's the lives of a few rabbits anyway? Those things multiply like hell anyway. And he said, that's not the point. And he jumped on me right there. Huh. Not very professional if you ask me. So they're literally like infighting, but we know the situ- we know- we know the conditions of the workers in here. They seriously need to like- unionized or something like they are being I mean they're bad guys I know that shit but their treatment is just so awful like <laughs> even a fucking millennial wouldn't put up with the shit they do I came off worse but of course I would have kicked his ass if the fight lasted a little longer sure you would have hugged Mindred rolled her eyes it, it was practically a law of being a guy to think you can kick anyone's ass that's funny. <laughs> a little sexist right there, but I mean, it is culturally culturally accurate. Not all the time, just some of the time with these jocks and shit. So what have you been doing? Nothing exciting, just one of those, uh, whatchamacallit, those things astronauts do. She gave him a moment, but he didn't know either. Anyway, this animal, 432, after a few minutes in the dark, he totally wigs out. Pretty interesting. It's like that Twilight Zone. He didn't seem, seem to think it was interesting. He thought it was boring, but he didn't say that. It was hot for winter. Mindred had nothing but a pull-on bra under her white coat. Ooh, wow. And this that was open in the front. Damn, she's showing him some bra. I couldn't even do that at the store while I work, and these people are... This is what I'm talking about. This place they're working in. Like, this... <laughs> This place, it could be like a fucking comedy show like The Office, just a fucking hella unprofessional ass workplace run by, uh, what's his face, that weirdo that had a cat die. Uh, don't make the animals too horny, he thought, but he didn't say. How much time? Oh, I'm at 14 minutes? Okay, cool. Chapter 10, Marry Nothing. Oh god, it's a Christmas episode. Mindred snapped the pellets between her fingers and dropped them into a water bowl. She slipped it into the door of 113's cage. Then she got out of there as fast as she could. Thank god she wouldn't be working in there today. Val hooted at the DOA. Woohoo, honey, keep your pants on. What? Look at that whore. Simon was thirsty, a bad sick thirst. He had been waiting for water, waiting all day. He kneeled down on the floor of his cage, trying to get a drink. Suddenly, Val spotted him. She reached her hand through the wire, knocking the bowl over with a powerful swipe of her paw. You mean hand. 
Simon was shocked for a moment before he realized what had happened. Bitch, you motherfucking son of a bitch. He was so frantic. What was, she, was she trying to kill him? You fucking bastard, you idiot. She shot back. That water was poisoned. Didn't you see her put that shit in it? He was frozen for a moment. Then he said something, but she couldn't understand it. Then he started to mutter. Why did they do it? Make us thirsty and give us only poison water to drink. Make us sick and only watch us as if to taunt us. Make us weak and kick us around. And then he started to cry. Aw, don't cry. Tiny, weak cries like a kitten. Or like he was. A sick, desperate 19-year-old boy who could run into death any day. That's depressing. Oh, uh, Willie ignored him. Why doesn't Val give her him some of her water? Whores. You want to talk about whores? Huh, I can tell you about this one time when me and my buddies were waiting for these boys on the street corner and we were all done up in a uh in a in about 50 pounds of makeup and she trailed off at uh, what is this <laughs> she's telling a story about how she used to be a hoe or that's just a date or something like that to anyone in the block whore was just a swear word they didn't know what it really meant uh, is that supposed to say that Willie was once, like, a hooker? Like, one of these, like... I don't know. I'm assuming she's, like, American. Like, she grew up in America. But, like... I don't know. Is she going along with this, like, stereotypical Southeast Asian, like, hooker central type of stuff? I'm not, I'm not gonna say anymore. And so we all had to wait there while she uh, gassed the rats to death. More humane, she said. Of course, we all know it's just because she likes to see them die slow. Huh, it doesn't make a damn difference to me, and it's a fucking waste of time. Why can't we just cut right into them, I say? They'd bleed to death in a minute anyway. <laughs> uh, Mindred took another bite of her lunch and replied, Yeah, I know. Isn't that, like, a waste of resources, too? If they're gonna die, who cares how it happens? Besides, what were they, rats? <coughs> rats are disposable. They multiply like flies. More humane. <laughs> and they both broke out laughing. So, yeah. Digger was a funny boy. His number was 818. It was tattooed onto his wrist and written on the outside of his cage. He had wide blue eyes, but not a normal sky blue or even periwinkle like Livell's. They were a deep, dark, bottom of the ocean blue. Not near as dark as navy blue, which was almost black, but still deep and watery. A cobalt blue. Yeah, thanks for the uh, fucking color lesson. He was also very thin, almost diabetic looking. Wow, that's fucked up. And he was the youngest of all of them, no more than 15 or 16, though no one could be sure. Was he Digger? Oh yeah. He had raven black hair, and it had been cut all funny. He had bangs on one side of his face, and they curled down over his eye. What the fuck? He sat up in his cage and sung. Let me turn off my food, one sec. This is cooking, after all. Cooking with the man. Alright, let that fucking cool off for a second. I'm having some boiled vegetables and rice. It'll be nice. And I'll put some sauce on it. There's a blue-eyed kid with rape. Oh my god, this is just like Lord of the Rings, where randomly, for no reason, they just burst into song. <laughs> okay. Uh, there's a blue-eyed kid with raven black hair, and all day long he just sits and stares, and I'm getting scared because he's just so weird, and I'm... Calling up a cab to get him out of here. Take him to a place where they drink and cuss. Because he really, really, really too fast for us. Really, really, too, really too fast for us. Then he started on the second verse. I got another kid. All she does is fight. I chain her in the day, but she gets out at night. And sometimes I think she's getting out of hand. So I'm calling up a cab to get her off my land. Take her to a place where they drink and cuss. Because she's really, really, really too bad for us. Really, really, really too bad for us. It's Val, Simon said. The first line is about Digger, the second is about Val. That's actually very clever. Thank you, Sicky. Simon narrowed his eyes but said nothing. Oh, oh, uh, Willie squealed. Sing one for me, please, pretty, pretty, please. Digger sang. There's a green-eyed flame who's talking real fast. She likes to dream weird dreams and talk of things gone past, and she won't shut up or stay in her cage. So I'm calling up a cab to get her in her grave. Oh wow. Take her to a place where they drink and cuss because she really 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 too loud for us. Really 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 too loud for us. Woohoo Digger are you saying pretty pretty. Oh I'm glad everyone's having such a good time in this fucking Nazi experimental camp. But they didn't just take me. I was sold. What? In your song you said to take me but I got sold you know. 
my owners gave me up for money. Her owners, she didn't have parents and nothing. She was already a slave. Maybe she was like a sex slave or something. That's pretty dark. Oh my god, I hear my cat yowling over there. Uh, the digger was confused, but something clicked in California's head, and suddenly she understood what Willie was saying. Yeah, I get it. How do you feel about that? She answered with the question. How much did they pay for you? Nothing. Then I guess I p feel pretty damn good about that. <laughs> wow. <laughs> That's fucking funny. California tried to shake off the feeling. There is no feeling in the world like being shocked. It's so unnatural. Nothing that can be explained exactly, but it has to be experienced. Wrong, California spat. It was the only wor word she could come up with. What shape has it been? The spiral? The circle? Damn it, they were so similar. The DOAs only changed the shapes after she got the pattern down completely. A memory test. Oh shit, it's 20 minutes, okay.